Welcome to Electron Online and our next topic on uh, modern physics. Uh, I guess we're still sticking with momentum. In this case, we'll just call it momentum of light. And uh, in our example, we have a laser. We turn our laser on for one second. So we turn the laser on for one second, then we turn it off. And so a beam of light will be emanating away from the, from the laser. Uh, well, let's call it a one second pulse. And of course, a one second pulse would be three times 10 to the eight meters long, 300,000 kilometers long because uh, light travels at 300,000 uh, kilometers per second, which means if we turn the laser on and off, that beam of light will emanate, and in one second you'll have a 300,000 kilometer long beam of light. Of course, that beam of light will have momentum, and we're looking for the momentum of that beam of light. So, assuming that the power of the laser is 1.5 milliwatts, and the wavelength of the light coming out of the laser has a wavelength of 626 nanometers. All right. The first thing we're going to do is find out how many photons are contained inside that pulse. And then secondly, we'll figure out what the momentum is for each photon. And of course, we multiply the number of photons times the momentum for each photon. That will give us the momentum for this, this beam of light. All right. So starting out with the number of photons. How do we figure that? Number of photons. All right. Well, first of all, we are told that the power is 1.5 milliwatts. That means 1.5 millijoules per second. So the energy contained within that beam, the energy in the pulse, therefore is equal to 1.5 millijoules, because a milliwatt is a millijoule per second. All right. So. Let's now figure out how, many, how much energy there is in a single photon. So the energy in one photon is equal to h times the frequency, which is equal to hc over lambda, of course, because c is equal to the frequency times the wavelength, so f can be replaced by c divided by lambda. All right, that way we have the energy of the photon in terms of the wavelength. So let's then go ahead and plug that in here. Energy of the photon is equal to hc over lambda, which is equal to 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34 joules times seconds. Multiply times the speed of light, 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. That's an 8 meters per second. And divide that by lambda. Lambda is 626 times 10 to the minus 9 meters. Okay, and that will actually give us the energy in terms of joules. Let's find out what that is. So we have 6.626 e to the 34 minus uh, times 3 e to the 8, and divide that by 626 e to the 9 minus, and that gives us energy of 3.175 times 10 to the minus 19 joule. So that's the energy in a single photon, and that's the energy in that pulse of light, so we can say that the number of photons is equal to the energy in the pulse divided by the energy per photon. Okay, so plugging in what we have, energy in the pulse is 0.0015 joules. Okay, that's 1.5 millijoules converted to joules divided by energy per photon, which is 3.175 times 10 to the minus 19 joules per photon. And that will give us the number of photons in that beam. All right, so we take the inverse of that, multiply that times 0 0.0015, and that gives us 4.724 times 10 to the 15th photons. It's a lot of photons. Now, now we go ahead, and since we're looking for momentum, let's not forget what we're looking for here. Now we're going to calculate the momentum in each photon. We've learned in our previous example that the momentum is equal to h divided by the wavelength. Planck, that's Planck's constant divided by the wavelength. So this is equal to 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34 joules times seconds divided by the wavelength, 626 nanometers, 626 times 10 to the minus 9 meters. And that should give us the momentum of a single photon. All right. So, 6.626 e to the 34 minus divided by 626 e to the 9 minus equals, and so for this particular wavelength, the momentum is equal to 1.058 times 10 to the minus 27, that would be kilograms, 
meters per second. So now we have calculated the number of photons in this one second pulse from the laser. We've also figured out the momentum for each photon. All we have to do now is multiply the momentum of each photon times the number of momentums. So we can say that P total is equal to the momentum for one photon times the number of photons. Okay, now, momentum one photon is 1.058 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms meters per second. And we multiply that times the number of photons, which we calculated here in the first part of the problem, 4.724, 4.724 times 10 to the 15 photons. And of course, that's per photon, like so. Okay, now we multiply those two together, times 4.724 e to the 15, and the total momentum in the beam, that would be total, and I'm kind of running out of room, I'll just have to squeeze in it, wow, numbers came out kind of interesting, equals 5.0 times 10 to the minus 12 kilogram meters per second. Let me circle that so it's easier to see. So ultimately then, total, oh, there we go. I can't spell total today. There. Momentum total, 5 times 10 to the minus 12 kilogram meters per second. That would be pico, so 5 pico kilogram meters per second. Very small momentum, but it's just in a single pulse of laser beam, one second long. All right. That's how you do that.